Amelia, one of the questions that I always wanted to ask a futurist is, what does it take to be a futurist? And what's your job like? Yeah, being a futurist is amazing. I love it. Um, it takes a lot of curiosity, a lot of perseverance, a lot of tenaciousness. Um, I have a real curiosity and interest in being on the cutting edge. I love to know the latest. I love to have the latest information. And I also like to disseminate. So there's so much information out there, misinformation, disinformation, and to be able to kind of root through it and find out what is important and be able to use these findings and insights to help uh, make forecasts for the future is um, something I really love. So I do a lot of reporting, a lot of research, consultancy around how companies can implement strategies today that can help make sure that they are ahead of the game in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a lot of buzz around, you know, there are keywords like blockchain, AI, VR, augmented reality, and so on and so on. What, in your opinion, are the most impactful technologies right now? Well, AI is undeniable. It is really going to be implemented in all aspects of our lives. It is not going backwards at all. It's only going to get bigger and continue to evolve and become more important. I was just saying some people, on when I was on stage, some futurists are predicting that within eight to 10 years, AI is going to actually be able to exceed human intelligence. So what does that mean in the future of our world when we are not the smartest beings on this planet? And we have this opportunity today to be the trainers of this AI. So how we are teaching the algorithms right now is going to play a huge role because if you think about it, it's like a, a child and maybe we are parenting it and being a role model, but eventually it will become this rebellious teenager and then go on to become an adult, um, being autonomous on its own and, um, and implementing systems and taking over some of the systems that we have today. So that one is definitely going to be huge because it'll play an aspect in all industries and parts of our lives. Any other? any other technology that you find that it deserves it, the hype? Sure, I also speak a lot about XR. So I have the XR Star podcast and it just is an area that I love and I think part of it is because I love to get hands on with technology and really try them and compare them. So I think within the next five years, we're going to reach a tipping point when it comes to using XR, especially within enterprise. So. XR includes virtual augmented mixed reality. And there's so many great use cases for these within enterprise, but we're also seeing the big tech companies all come out with their own consumer brand of AR glasses. So these will be glasses that are stylish, that are lightweight, that allow us to, instead of being hunched over on our phones all day, have a heads up, hands free experience. So in some ways, they'll help us to connect as humans better. Um, but we also have to be aware that this means that we're giving access for companies to literally see through our eyes. So they'll be able to pick up on subtle reactions to things. They'll know when we've lied or when we've committed a crime. It'll, they'll be present during our most intimate conversations. And essentially what this does is it gives them access to our emotional data. And eventually this means that we have to be aware that our, our emotional data allows for manipulation. So future ads might use people or avatars that have the same voice as somebody who we already trust or they'll look familiar to us. So we already have these emotional buttons being pushed. Yeah, I, I remember you mentioning it in one of your interviews, the emotion of things. Uh, but I also remember Yuval Noah Harari that I look up to a lot. And he mentioned uh, this uh, emotional technology that can identify our emotions and maybe tell us a little bit more about ourselves that we don't really know about. But he mentioned this, this, this problem with, I don't know, young well, teenagers that are on a party and they are playing, uh, playing with an app. Mm -hmm. And the app accidentally tells other people and yourself that you are in fact homosexual, but you don't even realize this. Yeah. Now, so let's move on to this ethical side of technology. What are the major things or major issues that you find with ethics in technology that we should consider? 
Well, so if we start with something like XR and the metaverse. So the metaverse is the future of the internet. And the internet was originally created by technologists and academics and, and government as a way for us to share information across geographic locations. Whereas this next iteration of the internet, Web 3.0, is being created by tech companies without government oversight. And for tech companies, at its core is um, consumerism, is getting us to buy things, and our data is their commodity. So right there, we have a bit of a dilemma because um, you know we want the internet to work for everyone and we want the tech to work for us and not us to work for the tech and the tech's sake. Okay. Uh, do you think there is any technology that we are overlooking right now but could be really impactful, but there is no buzz around it? There is no hype? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, I mean, anything around sustainability. Okay. Basically, green technology, anything sustainable, um, you know, that is going to help us to uh, reach some of these climate goals that we need to reach. And that's one of the things that I think is great about artificial intelligence, being able to work out the supply chain and to be able to um, reduce food waste and things like this. Um, you know, we have the the clinical knowledge base, which I mentioned in my talk, which allows um, it's a, doctors to pool their data so that if my patient profile matches somebody on the other side of the world and there was a treatment that cured them, I now have access to that. We're able to use things like cell phone data to track refugee movements, so the UN can send uh, facilities and helpers to be there. Um, also to predict things like uh, earthquakes and, and natural disasters. What about biometrics and using it in medical technology? Yeah, I mean, biometrics is a big part of, of medical. And um, so things like your heart rate, your uh, blood pressure, your sweat rate. But these are something that I think are also going to be incorporated within XR headsets. I, I see. And, um, and again, this, this promotes things like the emotional data. Okay. And so how do we ensure that our emotional data and our bio data doesn't actually get used against us to manipulate us. And also this brings up human rights issues of the future. Do I own my data, my bio data? Do I own what is happening in my body? And is that information, um, you know, can it be used by public and by companies to sell that on? And then also, you know, how do we protect the next generations? Mm -hmm. So these are all things that we need to start thinking about. One of my interviewees was Fion Ferreira, who found a way to use magnets to decrease uh, plastic pollution in oceans. So do you see any major uh, issues in the world like hunger or education or medical things that could be tackled with technology that we have right now, but we should maybe focus more on this technology or those solutions? I mean, for me, um, anything around climate change and food supply are huge. Um, there was just a startup on stage that was talking about how uh, the, the food waste is a one trillion dollar problem, you know, but how many people are going hungry? You know, we have great inequality in this world and if we can use technologies like AI to be able to democratize some of, um, you know, some of the um, commerce and to be able to promote equality amongst us, I mean, that's the thing, these algorithms, all this stuff, you know, while they can work for bad and they can make us feel bad about ourselves or to hate our neighbor, um, they can also make us feel good about ourselves and make us love our neighbor and bring people together. And it's just all about how we um, program the algorithms, the data sets that we work with, um, being able to make sure that we have an inclusive and diverse set of data. And a lot of that comes from engaging people at local grassroots level, getting individuals to care and to understand that they must show up and be a part of this, that we can't have the best people in humanity kind of say, oh, it's not my problem, because actually it's your data that is going to help promote are um, the best kind of future possible positive outcome for us. Yeah, you, you perfectly shifted to my last questions, uh, question pretty much because one of the recurring themes of my conversations is ethics and uh, more, human, more humane technology or the human aspect in technology. And 
we expect technology and in, in inventions to save the world or make our business much better, but we forget about the human aspect or what we do with it. What do you think we should keep in mind using technology and expecting it to, to make a progress? Uh, what, what we should do as, as humans, what we should remember, uh, what we should keep in mind? So that's a really interesting question because as a global society, we've never really agreed on a, a, a set of ethics between us. You know, different societies value different things. But as humans, I think we can all agree that there are several things that really matter and are important to everyone. And that is our own happiness, our, our compassion for the people that we love and our need for them to be happy. Um, as well as, as a desire to be loved. You know? So these are very human-centric ideas and feelings, and they're very emotional. And I think there has never been such an important time for us to embrace what makes us human and to embrace the authority that we currently still have over our thoughts, over our actions, and to make sure that we protect those and protect our rights to those things. And, um, and this is going to be what allows us to um, be ethical in our training of new technology.